Hello ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and IGN and Game Informer have both posted a whole bunch about Halo Infinite's campaign. IGN does a pretty good job of not posting real spoilers, but Game Informer, ugh, not so much. And there's also like a 40 minute podcast thing where three dudes are talking about the campaign and basically just not leak, but they talk about a ton of spoilers. So I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff. I'm mostly going to go over what IGN talks about, and in the background, I'm going to play their video and just give a few first impressions, second impressions, whatever impression number this is at the, you know, current time. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've had my reservations still about the campaign and where it's going to go and the story and blah, 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 but IGN's title is basically most of our concerns about Master Chief's long-awaited spiritual reboot melted away after a four-hour hands-on. And to me, this is fantastic news because I feel like a lot of the gaming media was just hounding Halo Infinite after their debacle of a showcase where they showed campaign for the first time, however many years ago it's been now. And it just seems like Halo was kind of doomed to fail in the eyes of critics. So the fact that it's pulled a complete 180 and people are actually talking about how good it is in their play sessions, I think is a, an amazing sign at this point. The IGN article is done by Miranda Sanchez, and I think that she does a really good job of not being biased because she does talk about 343's failure with Halo 5 um, and that story and how they basically couldn't give a lock of personality and stuff like that. So I think she's coming at it at a pretty unbiased view. She says that this probably won't be an amazing place for new fans to hop into Halo, but she also says that she wants it to be a game where, you know, old Halo fans are kind of recognized. And I completely understand that. I do think that there's gonna be like some onboarding process, video preview thing, I don't know. For new players, they kinda catch them up to speed, but we also have the Master Chief Collection. And if people really wanna know more about the story after playing Halo Infinite, they have that access and they also have YouTube and stuff. There's so many Hidden Xperia and Halo Can and all these dudes making amazing videos. Miranda talks about how the open world isn't super, you know, far cry with a bunch of tasks and things like that where you're taking off the, the main path or the main story beat to go do these random things. And I think that that was a big fear that a lot of people had. I, for one, am happy to hear that. The way that the world is set up really does sound like it's an evolution of Halo Combat Evolved, which is probably one of my favorite campaigns out of the whole series just because it feels open. It feels like you're able to make your own path and the encounters can kind of vary. She says that Zeta Halo is broken up into large island chunks that can't be crossed, but that's only in the beginning. They can be connected by bridges, which I assume are hard light bridges, maybe. And then she says that you can use a wasp to fly in between them. So I do wonder if like the whole map is gonna be like wide open by the end of the campaign, if there's gonna be like a loading screen or anything like that. Something to keep in the back of your brain. She talks about the forward operating bases that were claimed by the Banish and how if you clear it out, you get rewarded. Once you clear them out, they also turn into fast travel points and you earn Valor. Valor is a point-based tracker of how much ground the UNSC has on Zeta Halo, and you'll gain access to weapons, vehicles, Marines, and other things like that. She also says that you don't have to do this, that it's optional, which is kind of crazy that you could, I guess, beat the whole game without freeing any forward operating base. She then goes into probably some of my favorite points about the article, talking about how she found a secret room in the mountainside guarded by a small Banish patrol. And once she defeated them, she was able to get a rare and unique weapon called a Backdraft Cinder Shot, a slight variation on the Hard Light Launcher. That sounds fantastic to me. Something that I wanted in the campaign was a sense of diversity with weapons, almost like an exotic. And I think that that is so cool. She then talks about collectibles like audio logs, and there's also armor that you can find in the campaign that you can use in multiplayer. Also, there are skulls. And she talks about how you can use the scanner on your D-pad to do like a little scan of the area, but it's not an easy mode thing to just find all these collectibles. She then has a very curious line about the flood being alluded to in the campaign, though she never saw them. That line has me extremely hopeful, and I'm not gonna say anything else about it because I don't wanna jinx it. She also says that the Prometheans weren't present, which I think is fine. She then goes in to talk about the boss fights, and that's something else that I'm super excited for. I know a lot of people have been like, oh no, 
health bar enemies, bullet sponges, and Halo. Bleh, and I just don't, I don't know. I think that it's cool that there are these special enemies out there that you fight that are basically on par with a Spartan and, you know, the Banish kind of look up to them. And that's pretty much it for the, the important things that I liked or that made me excited for the game. I, I can't believe that in 2021, Halo has completely done a full 180 and people are extremely excited for this game and the reviews are actually good. I'm very happy. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are excited for any of these little snippets. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. And if you want more Halo content, make sure you sub to the channel. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.